Thomas with Plum Health DC here in Corktown, Detroit. And I'm a family physician, I'm a family medicine doctor, and I've received a ton of questions from people about the coronavirus. So I wanted to talk for a minute here about what the coronavirus is looking like and what the outlook is like and reassure you um, there, is some, there are reasons to be concerned, but there is no reason to panic at this point. So here's what I want to talk about. Um, we heard from the president last night that we're reducing visitors from Europe, and that's important because there have been large outbreaks, especially in Italy. Um, the concern there is that about two weeks ago, there are only 76 cases of coronavirus in Italy, but then um, as of yesterday, there are 12,000 cases and 800 deaths. So I think the public policy from our perspective is to limit people coming from Europe who may be able to spread the virus in the U.S. Then the other part of it is what we saw today from the state of Michigan. Um, they've recommended that people avoid large groups of 100 people or more. And that is so that the virus can't spread as easily. And that's why you're seeing people like the NBA, the NHL, the NCAA cancel all future events or postpone um, future sports games so you avoid those large crowds. Um, Good Morning America this morning, there were, you know, uh, there was a, like a virtual audience or something like that. So you're going to see that on TV shows, in sports, probably at political rallies. Um, there are going to be fewer people in the audiences, and that's all to cut down on the spread of the coronavirus. Um, so Many people will get sick and have upper respiratory symptoms over the next few days and weeks. Um, and most of these symptoms will be due to the common cold or from seasonal allergies. Some of these symptoms will be due to uh, the flu. The influenza virus is quite common. Um, and a few of these symptoms will be due to coronavirus. So my job as a clinician is to help my patients to triage their concerns and help them figure out when it's concerning enough for them to go to the emergency department and when uh, they can just stay at home and ride it out and when they should come into our clinic and be seen here and evaluated here at our office. So I'm gonna go through some of those algorithms. I'm gonna start with, um, and I'll post this in the, com um, in the comments section, but I'm gonna talk about the symptoms of coronavirus right now. Uh, the most common symptoms that are being seen are fever, cough, shortness of breath, and um, or a history of a recent travel exp or a recent exposure to someone with the coronavirus. So this is a virus that is mainly affecting people's lungs and they're having coughing fits and it can cause some respiratory distress. So um, fever is, great in, is seen in more than 75% of hospitalized cases. Um, cough is seen in 60 to 80% of cases. It can be a dry cough or it can be a productive cough and shortness of breath occurs in 20 to 40% of cases. Um, people can also present with headache, sore throat, a runny nose, that's in less than 15% of cases, and some people may have diarrhea or nausea and vomiting, that's seen in less than 10% of cases. So if you meet all those criteria, um, if you're having a fever, if you're having respiratory dis distress, and a fever is a temperature over 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, it would probably be beneficial for you to go to the emergency department and be tested for the coronavirus. As, as of right now, we do not have any coronavirus tests. Those are coming out shortly, apparently, through uh, companies like Quest Diagnostics and LabCorp. We haven't received any from, from the federal government or state government or local governments. Um, in addition, you know, on labs, some people are having a low blood cell count. So um, the other thing that we could do is check for a rapid flu test. If the flu is negative, then the coronavirus becomes more likely. Also, chest x-rays have been a useful tool. They've been found to uh, see like a ground glass opacity in the lungs, and that's uh, more in the peripheral distribution, and that's more likely for the coronavirus. Okay, so talking here about the symptoms, let's move on here. Uh, I, I, as I said before, my job is to help you triage. So if you have symptoms, I want to help you identify the right symptoms so you understand if this is concerning enough that you need treatment or if you just need um, you know, to write it out at home. So um, 
if you have a runny nose and a mild cough and a headache, I'm going to tell you to drink plenty of fluids, uh, take some ibuprofen and stay at home, self-quarantine yourself. If you have the capacity to stay at home away from your coworkers and away from elderly folks in the community, uh, that's, that's going to be a good idea because, you know, the concern is you might be 30 years old or 40 years old and relatively healthy, but you may pass it on to a young person who doesn't have a fully developed immune system or an older person with a waning immune system or somebody that you work with who has had a transplant or um, is on an immunosuppressive therapy or somebody who has a condition like HIV or cystic fibrosis who um, can't readily fight off these infections. So even though you might feel fine, you might feel like uh, doing your regular business, it might be best to stay at home, avoid unnecessary traveling. And uh, I recommend that people stock up on food supplies in case they, they need to quarantine themselves for a week or two weeks or even three weeks at a time. So um, in the comments, I'll put some algorithms about how to manage this or the things that I'm looking at when I manage my patients. Um, in, the, in the description here, I've linked the michigan.gov document that's discussing the coronavirus. I'm going to read through some of those recommendations because I think that it's important. I, number one, they say for individuals and families, learn about the signs and symptoms. I just talked about those. Two, if you have uh, respiratory symptoms like a cough, congestion, fever, stay at home. Um, call your healthcare provider's office. Um, utilize telemedicine, right? So if you can avoid going into the office when you have some mild symptoms, that would be better. That way your doctor can help you triage this. Uh, regularly clean and disinfect uh, frequently touch surfaces. Wash your hands thoroughly, especially before you eat. And I talk about this a lot. Before you touch your face in what we call the T-zone, that's your eyes, nose, and mouth. Make sure you wash your hands. They call it a T-zone because it looks like this. It's your eyes, nose, and mouth. Anytime you touch your eyes, nose, and mouth, please wash your hands before and after so you can prevent the spread of the virus. Um, if you can buy things online or order food online, do that to avoid going to restaurants or going to big stores where you know, there will be other people and more likely to spread the virus that way. Okay, so th that's from the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, they also talk about not going out into crowds of 100 or more. That's in this document as well. That's linked here, so I advise you to read through that. Um, finally, this is one, from one of my colleagues in the direct primary care world, Allison Edwards. She put this up on her blog, and I just thought it was perfect. Um, how to protect yourself and others if you have a virus, respiratory virus, stay at home. Uh, just like preventing any other respiratory virus, take good care of yourself, exercise regularly, uh, you probably want to avoid the gym at this point, but the weather is now getting nice enough where going for walks or going for runs outside, um, keeping yourself healthy that way will be helpful for you. Get a solid seven to nine hours of sleep each night. Um, wash your hands frequently. Um, if you can't avoid contact with those who are sick or if you're caring for the sick. So like if you are working at a nursing home and you're sick, definitely stay home because you don't want to communicate this to elderly residents of the nursing home who are vulnerable. That's what happened in Washington state. The virus was spread to a nursing home and they had a number of the residents die or become hospitalized because of the, their immune systems are not as strong as younger, healthier people. Um, I go through several other recommendations. Like if you are not feeling well uh, and you have mild symptoms and you talk to your doctor, you know, make sure you have enough ibuprofen, acetaminophen, uh, decongestants, antihistamines at home to last you for these concerns. Um, just a few notes about the coronavirus. You know, we've all had a coronavirus in the past. What makes this one different is that it's a novel coronavirus. Uh, or yes, it's a novel coronavirus. The COVID-19 is, is a new virus that we haven't seen before. And the, the typical mortality for the influenza virus is 0.1%. So one out of every 1,000 people who get the flu are going to die, right? But when you compare that to COVID-19 or the coronavirus, about two to 3% of people will die when they contract the coronavirus. Those are the early estimates that's playing out uh, in, in Italy. Uh, and 
China, the data isn't as transparent, so it's harder to tell how many people have died from the coronavirus. Uh, the median age out of China for the coronavirus infection is 59 years. Um, and then people tend to infect 2.2 other people. So once somebody gets it, they tend to infect 2.2 other people. And that's how these things spread. It's a virus. It goes viral. It can, can contaminate surfaces and infect other people pretty easily. And then the average length of time from onset of symptoms to hospitalization was nine days to 12 days. So that being said, you know, there is a, an infection period. So it takes time for you to develop symptoms that are severe enough for you to go to the hospital. So that's why it's important to avoid large crowds because you could be unknowingly spreading the virus to other people in your community. Okay, so I shared a lot of resources here. Um, I'm going to take your comments and questions now. Let's see. We've got, uh, let's see how I can see these comments. All right, hang tight. Uh, this is my first time going live on my own page here. So uh, bear with me while I see if I can find these comments. All right. Uh, we have, we've got a couple of shares here. Um, let's see. Comments, comments, comments. Sorry, folks, getting getting to the comments. Thanks for the shares, everybody. Everybody, thanks for the likes and uh, talking about this information. All right, somebody said, thanks for the excellent information. We got a couple tags here, um, a couple thank you notes. If you have any questions, just drop any questions that you have in the comments section below. I'm trying to keep an eye on it here, but uh, I don't have any questions at this point. So what I'm going to do is um, review this post over the next couple of days, uh, next couple of hours, and I'm going to come back to it and answer any questions that I can. So uh, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to include more links as they become relevant in the comments. And I also discussed some things that I would link in the comments section. So I'm going to put those in now. Uh, for now, stay safe, wash your hands well, don't panic, and take care of yourself. All right, take care.